Okay, so those are these rod-shaped viruses. And even we then learned that even some spherical viruses could be built with um, helical symmetry. For example, the influenza viruses have helical nucleocapsids, and they're roughly spherical. But there are other kinds of viruses that don't have envelopes, like, like poliovirus, which in an electron micrograph is a spherical particle. And that, that EM is an EM of polioviruses. And you can see they, they look roughly spherical. So back in the 50s and 60s, when people were trying to figure out uh, virus structure, the question was, how do you make a spherical virion from individual proteins that have irregular shapes? Because we knew from what protein structures we had, proteins have irregular shapes. And how would you put them together to make a round virus particle? And here are two clues that eventually gave way to our understanding of this, the answer to this. First, all the round capsids, all the viruses with round capsids, like polioviruses and, and others have precise numbers of proteins, always an exact number. They turned out to be multiple of 60. So it wasn't an, an odd number of proteins making up these viruses, always a very precise number, 60, 180, 240, 960, and even more. And clue number two, uh, the spherical viruses could be very small, like polio, 30 nanometers in diameter, or they could be very big. Yet the capsid proteins are always roughly 20 to 60,000 Daltons in molecular weight. Okay, so virus, virus capsids are made of fixed multiples of 60, and the capsid proteins never get too big. So this gave a lot of clues about how you would build these round viruses. And in particular, two uh, structural biologists, Casper uh, and Klug, thought about this a long time, did a number of experiments, and they figured out the solution. That is how you build a round capsid from irregular proteins. And they knew from, from Watson and Crick's work, which we talked about, that these round capsids are actually icosahedrons. And it was never any other kind of platonic solid. It was always an icosahedron, which was very interesting. They also found from their structural work that the subunits that made up the particles were tended to be arranged in groups of five or groups of six, which we call pentamers or hexamers. And then finally, the number of subunits, as I told you before, were multiples of 60. And these are called T numbers, which we'll explain in a moment. And again, there was nothing in between. So they devised a, a series of rules for building these round capsids using what's called icosahedral symmetry. And that's what uh, this poliovirus sitting down here is built with. And you can just see some of the traces of icosahedral symmetry on this plush toy here. So an icosahedron, of course, is a solid. It has 20 faces. Each face is an equilateral triangle. And uh, this allows you to make a closed shell with as little as 60 single proteins. You could take 60 identical protein subunits and build an icosahedron with it. And it turns out that this is the best way to make a closed shell with the smallest number of proteins that's going to be very stable. None of the other solids work. So here's an icosahedron. So we have, because of the repeated nature uh, of the subunits in icosahedral, you have what are called uh, rotational axes of symmetry. And there's a five-fold axis around which there are five copies of the subunit. There are three-fold axes and two-fold axes, and those are shown here on the bottom as well. And we'll talk about axes of symmetry a lot in this course. I'll say here at the five-fold axis of symmetry, you can see this interaction, and that's all that we mean. It's simply the axis around which there are five or three or two copies of the <coughs> subunit. So let's look at how you build uh, virus particles with this kind of symmetry. Now to do that, we have to learn about the triangulation number or the T number. And there are, there are a number of ways that you can look at it. There's actually a, a mathematical approximation of this. But I think the, the easiest way is to define it as the number of facets for each triangular face of the icosahedron. Remember, the icosahedron is made up of a dozen triangular faces. So here would be an example of one triangular face 
of an icosahedron. And this, this is a T equals one virus particle because it's made up of one uh, triangular <coughs> face. Here is a T equals four. And now you can see we've expanded the triangular face to include four facets, one, two, three, four. So you look at it in, as sort of a, a jewel in a way. So instead of having a flat face of each triangle and a T equals one, you now break it up into facets. Uh, in this case, you have four. And so this turns out to be the way you build bigger and bigger particles. You start with a small T equals one <coughs> icosahedra. You can make small particles. But if you want to make bigger ones, you just add more triangular facets. And those Mimi viruses, which are the biggest, have over a thousand triangular facets in each equilateral triangle that makes up the icosahedron. All right, so that's all that a T number is. It's just the number of facets per each triangular face. There's one facet here, there's four here. <coughs> so here is a simple icosahedral virus. It's a T equals one. It's made of 60 identical protein subunits, and each of those is shown as a comma here. And there's one facet per each triangular face. And all of these molecules, so these, each comma here is a single identical protein subunit. They all interact equally throughout the particle. So all the interactions are symmetrical, head to head, tail to tail, et cetera. They're all exactly equivalent uh, throughout the particle. So that's the simplest example. And here's an illustration of one virus with this kind of structure, T equals one symmetry, built with 60 copies of a single capsid. So it's one protein, repeated 60 times. You could build this wonderful stable capsid. It's really amazing. So here's the capsid protein up here. You repeat it 60 times, you get the adeno-associated virus, 2 virion or parvovirus, the uh, virus that can infect your, your pets. Um, and that's built with this very simple symmetry. So this is a small virus particle. It's about the same size as, as poliovirus. So how do you make a bigger one? You add more subunits to each triangular face. You don't use bigger proteins because remember the virus capsid proteins are only 20 to 60 kilodaltons in size. So you don't make bigger proteins. You just increase the number of them in the capsids. So let's, let's look at that. Now, when we do that, when you start putting more capsid subunits in to make a bigger particle, you violate the symmetry rules that Casper and Klug or originally thought up. Now they said that the way to build a particle is, is to use icosahedral symmetry and you take one or a few different viral proteins and you repeat them many times and all the interactions are the same no matter where you are in the particle. The problem is when you start adding additional subunits in they're not all the same interactions anymore and we have so Casper and Klug modified their theory to say well they interact in a quasi-equivalent fashion. They're similar, but not identical. So anytime you have more than 60 subunits, you, you run into this problem that all the interactions are not going to be the same anymore. So you have uh, different structural environments, similar interactions, but not identical. So that's what quasi-equivalence means. Let's, let's take a look at how that works. So here is a T equals three uh, virion. And this is, a, we've now made three uh, facets to each icosahedral face or triangle. We've made a bigger virus particle, so now we have 180 protein subunits. This particular virus, each subunit is still the same protein. We've just added more per triangular face, and we can make a bigger particle. And as a result now, you get three different kinds of subunit packing. The orange, the yellow, and the purple subunits have slightly different kinds of interactions you get what are called pentamers and hexamers. You can see here there are groups of five. Here, one, two, three, four, five. But here there's a group of six. And that's what happens when you add more subunits. You get pentamer and hexamer type interactions on the capsid. So you can see there's no way, just by looking at the pentamer and hexamer arrangement, there's no way that the interactions could be equivalent any longer. That's why we say they're quasi-equivalent. They are uh, in similar interactions like head to head or tail to tail, but there are local bonding differences. So that's how you make a bigger virus with, without completely violating the, the symmetry rules. So here's an example of a T equals three 
virus. It's an insect virus. It has 180 copies of a single capsid protein. Uh, here it is in, in the triangular face here. And this is slightly bigger than the adeno-associated virus because we've gone from 60 to 180 subunits. But the same principles uh, apply. These are arranged with icosahedral symmetry. And all the interactions are similar, but they're not identical. <coughs> So this is a summary of, T, of the T number, just to sort of emphasize what this is. <coughs> and these are three different viruses with three different T numbers. Here's T equals one. Remember, there's one facet in the triangular face. Uh, and so if you, if you look at this as the, one of the triangular faces here, it only has one facet. It's got the minimum number of proteins, 60, to make up the particle. Here is a T equals three where you've now inserted three facets into each triangular face, one versus three here. You can now make a bigger virus particle. And you can always calculate the number of subunits by multiplying 60 times the T number. So we know this is 180 subunits, the one we just looked at. And here's a T equals four virus particle. And now you can see the facet has been divided into, the face has been divided into four facets, one, two, three, four. So now you can get a virus with 240 subunits. And you can go on and on, t equals seven, et cetera. Some numbers are not allowed by the rules of symmetry. We never see them, but they can go very high. They can go up into over 1,000. So that brings us to this cartoon, uh, which I can't resist showing to you. It's Foxtrot, and uh, it's just totally relevant to this lecture. It's this two guys, what are you looking at? Viral videos like Star Wars Kid and Numa Numa, electron microscope analysis of a human picornavirus. We must get different emails. See how the capsid is icosahedral in shape. 